This is your Tech News Briefing for Thursday, April 6. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Sam Altman is the 37-year-old co-founder of OpenAI, the startup behind ChatGPT and Dolly. He's been a figure in Silicon Valley for years as a founder and an investor. But now, Altman is at the center of one of the fastest developing technologies that's raising both excitement and concern. WSJ reporter Berber Jin spoke to Altman about OpenAI and how he's balancing business concerns. And Berber joins me now. Hey, Berber. Thanks for being here. Hey, Zoe. Can you give us a little background on Sam Altman? Who was he before OpenAI? He's a very Silicon Valley type of figure. He's almost a bit of a celebrity. And it's because he ran this startup accelerator called Y Combinator, which essentially accepts mostly college students who are applying to create companies. They want to create the next Dropbox. They want to create the next Uber. And then before that, he dropped out of Stanford to create a social networking startup called Looped, which wasn't very successful. It actually sold for close to the amount of money that investors put into the company. How did he come to co-found OpenAI? Around 2014, 2015, that was a time when a lot of people in Silicon Valley, including Elon Musk, were growing very concerned about the sort of dystopian potential of AI. And I think Sam shared in the concern of AI's misuse. He worked at an AI lab in college. He had always been fascinated by computers as a kid. And I think he's a bit different from other startup founders. He cares a lot about sort of frontier technology, nuclear fusion, human longevity. AI sort of fit into that bucket of really advanced technology that he wanted to develop. And so in 2015, he decided to co-found this nonprofit called OpenAI, primarily alongside Elon Musk. When OpenAI started, it was this nonprofit. Now it has a for profit wing to it. Can you tell us a little bit about that shift and why it was made? You know, according to the OpenAI co founders, what they realized in 2017, two years after the lab started, was that the best way to make progress in AI was through large language models, which is the technology underpinning ChatGPT. It's these advanced AI algorithms that can become smarter by reading billions of pages of human text and then sort of mimicking human responses based off pattern recognition to different questions that a human asks them. So that type of training requires a lot of computational power because you're sort of running the algorithm on billions of pages of text on the internet. And so OpenAI realized that they wouldn't be able to raise that much money as a nonprofit. They wanted to be able to attract investors who wanted to make a return on their investment in OpenAI. And so the only way to do that was to create a for-profit. How has that decision to create a for-profit arm been perceived by people inside and outside of OpenAI? It was incredibly controversial, and Sam alienated a lot of people that he worked closely with because OpenAI's mission was always to develop artificial intelligence outside the influence of shareholders. The two people he's really alienated, the first is Elon Musk. He was a co-founder in the company. He didn't like the decision to turn it into a for-profit. He wanted more control in 2018. He was essentially rebuffed. And in the past few months after the release of ChatGPT, he's been really vocal on Twitter and privately about the new deal that OpenAI has done with Microsoft, the $10 billion investment, which of course is enabled by the decision to become a for-profit. And he's criticized the degree of corporate influence that OpenAI has come under. They are selling their models to companies like Snapchat and, and Instacart. They're licensing their technology to Microsoft. So Those decisions have come under fire. He's also alienated a lot of safety researchers who worked at OpenAI over the years, namely Dario Amade, who was the lead safety researcher. He left in 2021 with several other OpenAI researchers to found a rival AI lab called Anthropic, which focuses more on the safety side of AI research. What did Altman say about the Microsoft deal in particular? 
Sam sort of frames it as something that he almost had no choice but to do, again, given the large computational costs associated with developing large language models. He emphasizes that it's not a typical corporate partnership, right? OpenAI has the right to cancel Microsoft's shares at any time if they think the partnership has gone astray or if it started to develop dangerous technologies or if another organization developed powerful AI and OpenAI wanted to assist them instead of competing with them. And he emphasizes as well that there are profit caps to Microsoft's investment. So Microsoft can't make more than seven times the total amount of money they've invested. That's still a very large profit cap considering they invested $13 billion. But, you know, it, it is unusual for an investor to have their profits capped in that way. What is his take on the idea of having global standards or a global governance to oversee AI? So he was a bit vague about this. Over time, he wants the executive team at OpenAI to have less control over the technology. He wants to give everyday citizens a say in the technology. Again, he wasn't very specific about it. It's clear he's thought about it. And he wants to engage different stakeholders along the way. He didn't go into specifics about what that would look like, but he's been saying it for years. I mean, he said it in 2016, so I guess we'll see. So how is OpenAI dealing with concerns about the risks of this technology? Their philosophy is that it's better to put some of this technology into the world and allow people to become familiar with it, play around with it, and then also for OpenAI to gather feedback on the way in which those releases can be further refined to make it more aligned with human values. So what comes next for OpenAI and for Altman? Yeah, so they just released GPT-4, which is the most powerful language model that they've released. So the next step is GPT-5. Sam is also thinking a lot about that global governance aspect. So I think we can expect to see also some more like concerted political efforts by OpenAI to try and shape policies around like regulation at the government level. So a lot more to potentially watch with Sam Altman. That's WSJ reporter Berber Jin. Thanks for joining us, Berber. It's a pleasure as always. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. For more tech stories, head over to our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.